Hey everyone, welcome to the Hornet King channel, and in this video I'll be removing a massive German yellow jacket colony that decided to make its nest in a client's camper. And this nest was absolutely massive and had thousands of yellow jackets flying around inside. And bring it home and feed it to my animals, my two emus, my Rhea, and my chickens. Here's the video guys, check it out. I'm the Hornet King, and I removed some incredible and insane wasp nests. I guess you don't have a phobia anymore. No, uh-uh. Matter of fact, it's just the complete opposite. Now, it just it don't, they don't bother me at all. I actually have a few colonies at my house. When I relocate them, I put them in my barn or put them around the, uh, around the property. Now I see. Oh, yeah. That's how they're getting in. She's real active. <laughs> oh, yeah. Alright. Does this drawer come out too, or is that is that a faux drawer? come out, but I would have a feeling that it has these attached to it. Yeah, right. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah, it will come out. I think it comes out all the way, and then you have access to that total open cavity. Okay. Uh, we didn't try it. Yeah, sure. Sure, I got you. Man, that is a... That's a really good sized nest. Is it? Oh yeah. All right. Oh yeah, they're everywhere. Really? Yeah. Just sitting around at the screens mainly. Quite a few dead ones over there, the edge. Oh man, that it goes way under here. Really? Holy crap. That's like it's like way under there. They're mainly gonna be peeved off at me. Yeah. Once they get into this space, they're they'd be confused. They don't they're not familiar with the space. That's why they're getting stuck at that screen over there. Let's see if I can pop this up. She just there's a lot of Feels like there's some nest holding it down. Oh goodness, that's amazing. Yeah, that's a nest, man. That is. Should I show that in the video too? Maybe we can see that. Crazy. And that's something. That's amazing. So that's all comb right there, and then this is just all obviously all envelope. This whole thing is just covered in envelope. All right, we'll get back to me. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is German Yellow Jacket, and the suborder is Vespula Germanica Anthic, which is the least aggressive yellow jacket species that I deal with here in PA. 
So this is typically a cavity nest building yellow jacket species, which means that they build in structures like sheds, houses, wall cavities, attics, etc. But they do sometimes nest in the ground too in other locations. I've only removed about two colonies that were actually in the ground. The rest of them have always been cavity nest building yellow jacket species. So this particular colony was founded by a queen who was able to find her way into this cavity through a little hole in the floorboard of this camper. She started her colony by attaching her nest to the bottom of this seat. Does it, feel, does it look like I'm catching anything? But I can feel them going in there like pennies. Really? <laughs> yeah. So I get a lot in the comments that people say that my vacuum is really weak and I'm not really getting any when I'm vacuuming them up, but I'm actually vacuuming up quite a bit and I can feel them going into the nozzle like as if I'm vacuuming up pennies, which is the best way I can describe it. So even though it may not look like I'm getting a lot, I am getting a ton every second that I'm vacuuming. We think that that is made of a roll of paper towels. <laughs> I think that that's what they did. Because uh, there, there was a full roll of paper towels in there, we can't find it. Yeah, well, I, uh... They make this out of wood. Oh, do they? Yeah, so they would chew on like a fence post or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's not to say they didn't chew away your paper towels to uh, make the nest bigger. So there's a misconception that yellow jackets will build their nests out of actual paper to use as a material to build the nest, but that's not true. They will chew on wood, like fence posts and things, to make the envoy. That's impressive. Yeah. So this is the main part of the nest here. This is just stuff that they added on. As I've mentioned many times in other yellow jacket removal videos is that there's two parts to the structure of a nest. There's the comb and then there's the envelope. Both are made of virtually the same material. The comb is a solid structure that the queen lays her eggs in and the envelope is just paper that encases the comb. Now, a lot of these seem to be pretty young. Young? Yeah, they don't, they're not very big. Oh, yeah, that's just the size of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. The same bigger ones, they're the queens. But I haven't seen any queens yet, all I've seen are adults. So I get a lot in the comments, and even my clients will assume that yellow jackets, when they hatch from a nest, that they actually start out as small, young yellow jackets, and then they grow up to adult yellow jackets outside the comb. But that's actually not true. Yellow jackets develop inside the comb as a pupating adult, and when they hatch, they're at their full adult size. They don't get bigger. The queen is the only one that actually will get larger. Her abdomen will become engorged from laying eggs but they're not actually developing into larger yellow jackets outside the comb. So I'll start removing the envelope off the bottom of the seat, and typically I'll just use the vacuum to suck up envelope because there's a lot of workers that are in between the layers of envelope, and it just makes it easier because if I start pulling it off with my hand, you'll start seeing yellow jackets flying everywhere. But in a nest like this with Vespa Germanica Anthic, they make so much envelope that by the time I was done with this nest removal, my vacuum would just be packed with envelope and yellow jackets and whatnot. It just makes it easier for dumping out the vacuum to not vacuum up all of the envelopes so it's not just all packed in there. Because remember, I'm doing about five to nine yellow jacket and hornet nest removals in a day. So if I fill up that vacuum in the first removal with a bunch of envelope, I'm not gonna have any room to do any other nest removals. Wow. That's why I say 2,500 adults. <laughs> That's incredible. So when I'm removing a nest like this, I do a lot of damage control in the beginning of the removal process where I'm vacuuming up as many of the foragers and things and the workers inside the nest as possible. Because if I just like reach my hands in and just pull out the comb without having vacuumed anything up first, they're going to be everywhere. Now they're already kind of everywhere, but it'd be even worse than this. Now inside this camper, the all these windows have just screens on them and these little flaps and zip. And that's where the homeowner is. He's on the outside watching through the screen. So he's, he's obviously safe. But flying around inside of there are tons of yellow jackets. If I just reach in there and start ripping the envelope apart and pull the comb out, they're going to be all over me. They're going to be all over the inside of the camper. So I try to do a little bit of damage control and vacuum them up while they're just hovering around where the nest actually is. Now, again, when I start removing some of the envelope and stuff, they're going to fly out. They're going to go to the screens, and that's totally fine. I don't open up the screens to let them outside because if they go outside, they're just going to circle around, come right back in the entranceway, and then I'm going to see them at the bottom. Some people do that. I don't really do that. I like to trap them in the space that I'm in. So as workers and foragers are coming in from foraging from outside, 
they're going to be coming in and be funneled into the space, and then I'll be able to vacuum everybody up. That leaves for less Yellow Jackets to be flying around the site when I leave. You're obviously not going to be able to get every single Yellow Jacket during a removal, so what I tell folks is when I'm removing a nest from a cavity like this, is that I vacuum everybody up, as many as I can, inside the space, and then I'll spray a little bit in the entranceway where they're entering from, and that keeps the ones that are coming back from foraging from getting back into the space. So it's up to the client to have to patch any holes or fill any gaps to try to keep returning yellow jackets from getting into the space. Now with this particular client, I told him to move the camper. I said, once I'm finished up here and everybody's pretty much vacuumed up, move the camper to another point of the property and that way they won't really know where to go. So returning foraging will come back and they'll hover around where the camper used to be. They're not gonna look at over the camper across the way and say, oh, there's the camper, let me go inside of it. They're not gonna know that. They're, they're, it's basically like GPS coordinates. If you don't have the GPS coordinates of where to go or they're, they're telling you to go somewhere where the nest used to be, they're not going to be able to find another place by like observing the camper from a distance. So again here, just trying to remove as much of the envelope and just vacuuming up the last little remaining bits of the envelope inside of this space. They had just caked envelope in all kinds of little nooks and crannies. So around this drawer, there was just a bunch of little areas that were filled up here and there. So I had to like just reach in with my hand and just pull it out. It was a lot easier just pulling it right out of the from in between these spaces and putting them into the bag where the nest was. And this could be a bit of a tedious task inside of a cavity like this because there's so many yellow jackets that are just like hunkering down inside the little nooks and crannies. So even when I start like moving bags, moving boxes, pulling the drawer out, there's a bunch of yellow jackets that are emerging from those spaces. So that's even more that I have to vacuum up. So even though the ones flying around, they're not really the hard part. I'm going to let them go to the windows and I'll get them right off the windows. But it's the ones that are hiding underneath of all this paraphernalia in here that makes it even more difficult because there's boxes, there's bags, there's bins, there's a drawer. So I have to go through all of that stuff to make sure that I get all the yellow jackets out of the space that were in there when I started. So I tell the client here that there's about 2,500 yellow jackets in this colony. And I know now that that's a very, very conservative guesstimate as to how many were in this colony. I, since my two videos ago, I counted how many yellow jackets were in my vacuum and it came out to about 5,000. So now I know better to say that there's only 2,500 yellow jackets in a colony like this. Vespula Germanica makes the largest colony structures that I deal with here in PA. So if it's a German yellow jacket colony and it's this active, it's probably over 5,000 yellow jackets. And again, that's conservative. So you can see they're flying all around the screens here. So this is actually the easiest part of the job. It's just going around, sucking them off the windows and screens and all that. Um, what gets to be a little bit tedious here is that ones are flying around in the space. They haven't gone to the windows yet. So even though you vacuum them all off the screen, you'll turn around, go to another screen, and then you turn back around again, back to the original spot, and there's a bunch more caked all over the screen. It's like, oh my gosh, where were you guys hiding? You know. So it takes a bit of time to just sit here and just vacuum them all up. The ones that are all dead here on this little uh, cover flap, those are ones that were already in the space before I arrived. So they'd probably been there for the last couple days. They got out of the space where the nest was and then they flew to the screen and flew to that flap and they just died and then they landed on it and, and laid there. So, so the ones that were just laying there dead, I even tried to clean them up even though I'm not the one who released them into the space. So once I'm all finished up, I just try to screw back on the seat cover, put the cushion back on and then just check around again for, as a final pass through to make sure that I got all the yellow jackets that were flying around inside the camper and everything looks good. Okay, might as well get this nest out. Don't anybody sting me. Cold, dead stingers. Size nest. All right, there's a couple of ones that fell out. Ooh, some vacuuming to be done. Maybe someone has a little vacuum that can suck some of these up. I thought you got your fill. Aren't you fool? Oh, you want more? You want more? Okay. There you go. Did 
Yummy foodies. Put these in the box. Somebody's, somebody's getting ready to fly, which is fine, because they're just going to go somewhere else, but that's one landed on me. A lot of them are males. In the box. All right, ready, birdies? Run it so you can go somewhere else. More nests over here. Good birdies. Very fat booty. Very, very fat booty. Very fat booty. Why is it the fat booty? What is it you're eating that the other ones aren't eating? It makes you feel fat. Everyone, 
Let's talk it for Rhea the Rhea. Rhea the Rhea. You gonna eat the queen, birdie? No, you're not gonna eat the queen? Okay. I bet one of the little red birdies will. Oop, oop. One of the red birdies ate her, or is eating her. Eat her, birdie. Hello, emu birdie. Makes the adult yellow jackets. He's kept them. So is she. She's getting a lot of the adults. It's so funny. She like bypasses a lot of the larva. Goes after the uh, adult yellow jackets. You my booty. Oh, rear the rear. Maybe a rear the rear. Don't be afraid of her. Step two feet away from her, she can't catch you for two years. 